Auto Club Speedway saw multiple strategies play out as many backrunners gambled and cycled to the front, causing a pack-styled race briefly in the event. Kevin Harvick won Stage 1, but Denny Hamlin took over and won Stage 2 and the race. Gary Owen finished a career-best second place after Harvick blew a right front tire, taking himself out and collecting Truex Jr., allowing Gary to gain two spots coming to the line. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat 3 Career Mode. Today we have the uh, truck race for Haley Deegan at Las Vegas and then we have our cup race in Martinsville. So hopefully we can have a good run in Martinsville. But we're going to see how Haley Deegan did in uh, Las Vegas. We know our truck wasn't very good coming into this race as expected. Uh, we don't have the equipment yet. And she qualified dead last unfortunately. And that was pretty much the story of this whole race. You'll see as we go into turn one, already a big gap was being built between uh, Haley and the rest of the field. So unfortunately, she lost a little bit of time. And the first stage, she just ran right in the back. And then in the second stage, she started to move her way up a little bit. Uh, you, she got up to the back of the 92. I don't know. I think that's Timothy Peters in the 92. And eventually, when we got a restart to start the uh, last stage, she was actually able to get into i think it was p31 briefly uh, and then after that it was pretty pretty much just a downhill fall you see here as she was battling on the inside of the number 50 truck for uh 30th place and we thought at this moment we we're like okay well maybe we might have a chance to get the truck up into maybe even a top 25 but unfortunately we weren't even close to that as the run went on she lost time and eventually she fell back to p32 you can see just how much of a gap was built up now as she came into turns three on the last lap and got on the apron and just about wrecked, but held on to it. But she was several seconds behind the field and she came through to finish last. And this was really um, kind of when I realized that we really needed to make some big upgrades to this team because what we had was not enough to compete. So in our next truck race, we should be a much uh, more competitive team, hopefully. So. We need to, you know, get into the top 10 as a, as a team because we're not going to make the playoffs running like this. So hopefully next time around, I'm not sure what track is next for the trucks because I thought it was Martinsville, but apparently it's not. But uh, we'll see what we can do then. But now we come to our cup race uh, for myself, and we made it to the last session in qualifying, and we currently had the fastest lap for the moment now as we tried to make another attempt in um, turns three and four behind Kevin Harvick on the exit of four. We get a little bit wide, but we come across the line and we do a 19.3 to end our lap, but we hit a 19.2 at best, and that puts us in P8 to start in Martinsville. So we're going to, we're going to be starting on the outside line, so let's see what we can do. We're coming to you live from Martinsville Speedway in Ridgeway, Virginia, for the running of the STP 500. Known as the paperclip due to its unique shape, this historic track is the shortest in NASCAR, at just over a half mile in length. Opened in 1947, Martinsville is also the only track to be on the NASCAR circuit since the very beginning. This historic venue is overflowing with NASCAR tradition and memories. Today, it's also overflowing with fans excited to see our first short track event of the year. So grab a chair and settle in. NASCAR racing is coming up next. All right, there you hear it now as we are ready to go green in Martinsville. Clint Boyer and Jimmy Johnson will lead the first two rows. The 48, really good effort here, and he usually runs good in Martinsville, so I can't be surprised. But uh, you see some drivers with inspection problems who will be starting in the back, Danica Patrick and Bubba Wallace. And now it's time for us to start from P8 and go green in Martinsville, and hopefully we can work our way up the field as the green flag is about to wave Clint Boyer he will lead him to green as green flag waves in Martinsville from eighth position as we start behind Kevin Harvick going into turns one and two we have Kurt Busch behind us who already already gets into the back of me to start this race and forces it three wide on the exit of turn two and we're gonna get clear of him uh, him and Kyle Busch as we go into turns three and now behind the 10 of Eric Almirola who's battling on the inside of his teammate of Kevin Harvick on the exit of turn four down the front straightaway as we complete the first lap in Martinsville as we try to get to the inside of Kevin Harvick and we do just that on the exit of turn two a little bit of contact down the back straightaway not too much thankfully as we go into turn three Harvick goes a little bit wide allowing me to clear him and get to the inside of the number 11 of Denny Hamlin as we also get into the side of him down the front straightaway as we go into turns one 
We move up the track a little bit, but we do get a solid exit out of the corner, and that puts me into P7, clear of the Joe Gibbs Racing driver of Denny Hamlin as we go into turns three, as El Marola puts a little bit of a gap between himself and I as he uh, tries to get to the back of Martin Truex Jr. As you see up ahead of Truex, we have Jimmy Johnson, who certainly did not have a very good start, but he did start on the outside, so it's understandable as we exit turn two, slowly trying to close the gap on Eric El Marola as uh, Clint Boyer continues to lead early on in this race uh, with Joey Logano hot on his tail. Not much of a gap being changed at this point in the race. Al Marola and myself were kind of maintaining a similar gap as we had Kyle Busch. He was certainly closing in on my back bumper and we were trying to hold him off as uh, the gap does start to stretch out a little bit here between myself and the 10 car. I noticed pretty early on in this race that the car wasn't turning very well on exit as we did get past. By, uh, by Kyle Busch now as we came to lap 14 just about halfway through the stage with Kevin Harvick behind us but yeah the car wouldn't really turn on exit like I needed it to so I decided that uh, once we get to do our first pit stop then we're gonna have to make uh, some type of maybe tire pressure adjustment and maybe a slight wedge adjustment you can't go too far in here because the car will be extremely loose and just uncontrollable where you'll be wrecking every lap so uh, I learned that in practice but you see up ahead now the front runners start to deal with a little bit of lap traffic we got Greg Alding on the outside getting passed by all the front runners at the moment now as we fast forward a few more laps running behind Kyle Busch with Kevin Harvick still behind me as they start to train behind the lap cars which they do that quite often uh, at Martinsville the AI will just sit behind the lap cars and they won't want to make a move and it basically forces you to either kind of ride behind them or go to the outside of the uh, guys in front of you which is exactly what I was thinking of doing at this point because I, I seen the ability um, and the opportunity to gain several spots if we run the outside so we ran behind Kyle Busch on the inside just trying to maintain our position for another few corners or so but we do have a pretty good run out of turns forward so I decided maybe we should give it a shot but you see the 18 he moves up the track a little bit and I decided well we're not going to do it this time by so maybe in turns three and four down the back straight away Kyle Busch does have a pretty good run and I decide we're going to try and go to the outside of him in turns three and four now on the exit of turn four pretty even as we exit the corner we do have the momentum down the straightaway but he's still at my quarter panel as we go into turn one as we try to get to the outside of Eric Almarola now now clear of the 18 car so we can get to the inside if we need to and that's exactly what I did I got in behind Eric Almarola and we gained one spot out of that and that's really kind of what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to try and make a pass on the outside get back in line and then um, get ready to maybe set a guy up for the next corner and then do the same thing and just repeat outside line pass guy get into the bottom make sure we kind of keep our position as you see we did go to the outside of Eric Almarola now on the exit of turn four coming to lap 29 three laps to go in stage one as we should be able to clear Eric Almarola if we can get alongside the 78 of Truex and we did for a brief moment but now on the exit of two we do clear the 10 of Al Almarola so we go to the inside once again and get behind Martin Truex Jr. as we get into the back bumper of him a little bit no harm done there as we get to the outside quarter panel of him down the back straight away and I decided that we might as well go for it here as well and try to get past him as we only have two laps to go in the stage we go way wide though on the exit of two just about getting into the wall as Al Marola is able to clear me as I continue to ride around the outside as Clint Boyer does the lead coming to the white flag in stage one now as we clear Al Marola once more now to the outside of the 78 of Martin Truex Jr. once again in turns 1 and 2, trying to get up to P5 before the stage is over so we can start on the inside. We have Ty Dillon, though, up ahead in the way as we go into turns 3 and 4. One final time, we're going to get into the back of the 13, but it's not going to work in our favor as it slows us up a little bit. As we exit turn 4, coming to the line, we're going to get P5 in stage 1 as we barely edged out Martin Truex Jr. for the position, which will allow me to start on the inside for this restart as well as gain six points um, for the standings and hopefully that can boost us up a few more spots because we're not in great shape looking at the playoff picture right now but we still have plenty of time to go obviously until the playoffs start as we're going to be restarting P5 behind Chase Elliott as Clint Boyer leads us once again to the green flag with Joey Logano on his outside this time around as we go into turns one that was a very unorganized restart no one was really wanting to hold their lane there but we do get to the inside of the 48 down the back straight away he does 
just about clear me for the moment but we are able to just slide in behind him as we overshoot turns three and four and that allows martin truix jr to get to my inside now as we go into turns one he's going to not lift early as i thought he would i was hoping he was going to lift early and we'd slide down in front of him but that was not the case unfortunately now as we get down in front of eric almarola before we lose too many spots as we get into the back of the 78 again hit the curb a little bit there that's the first time we've hit the curb in this race Sometimes you hit it and it'll just completely destroy you. And sometimes it'll be like that right there where it doesn't really affect you at all. But hopefully we can gain a few more spots. The car was still really tight on the exit of the corner. Obviously we haven't made a pit stop yet. Uh, but once we do, we're going to have to figure something out. Because you can see how much better right there that the AI can turn on the exit of the corner versus myself. When I really just about go right up towards the wall while they're able to turn down and get way better of an exit uh, than I can so it's really costing us uh, down the really the exit of the corner down the first kind of half of the straightaway is uh, where we're really losing time and the gap continued to stretch out a little bit now as we come to lap seven in stage two a little bit bigger of a gap between Truex and myself so they're pulling away and just because of this exit being so tight it's really hard to keep up with the top five guys right now but uh, we're doing a good job holding our position so uh, oh, we get a caution that is going to give us a outside restart. I, I couldn't find what happened, uh, unfortunately, in the replays. But um, so someone wrecked. Uh, we know that much. And now we're going to be restarting P6 as we go green once again in stage two. It's going to be on lap 11, leaving us 20 laps to go to the finish in stage two as we are going to have to try and get down in front of Eric Almarola on the exit of turn two, giving Logano a shove down the straightaway. As we get down in front of Almarola, we kind of block him, and he's going to give me the bumper into turns three and four and shove me up the track into the 22, and I was not a big fan of that. Now, as we go down the straightaway, we're going to let him know we didn't like it as we get into the side of him going into turns one, but he is going to clear me into turn one now, and we give him another, another shot to the bumper as we exit turn two, uh, certainly getting a little bit physical here in Martinsville. You see the, how beat up the 10 car is, so he's clearly not afraid to uh, maybe get into the other drivers in this race. As we just learned, he just shoved me. I, I cut down in front of him, so I maybe kind of deserved it. But um, he did not have any problem with just shoving me out of the way. Now as we fall back to P6, uh, as El Marola was able to get past me, as Daniel Suarez now up to P7, who got his first win a couple episodes ago in Phoenix. So he's already locked into the playoffs now as I believe Clint Boyer still leads. But Jimmy Johnson has rallied his way back up into the second position as Chase Elliott runs P3. He's been pretty much running third or fourth this whole race. And, uh, and we, we haven't really had any big position changes other than Joey Logano who just got cycled way back. Uh, I'm not even sure if he's in the top 10 at this point now as we get ready to approach the halfway point in stage two. We got 16 to go at the moment, and you can see the 19 closing up on my back bumper. But thankfully, we come to the last handful of laps in stage two. We were able to hang on to P6 as the uh, front runners now were dealing with lap traffic once again as we approach Brendan Gone in the number 62 South Point Camaro down the back straightaway. He, he is running dead last. He might have been the car that brought out the caution. I doubt it though, but we sent it up the inside and got clear of him with no problem. As you see, a big kind of boggle of cars right up ahead all the front runners are going like three wide up in front of us Truex, Elliott and Johnson going three wide as Clint Boyer does have a lap car between himself in second place that is Greg Galding who's kind of holding up these guys right here and this should be easy for Clint Boyer to get in stage win out of turn four it will be two laps to go in the stage and we have clearly gotten to the back of the 10 and the 48 and we do remember what the 10 did earlier in the stage so maybe we could shove him out of the way if we need to get an extra position or we're going to race race him clean as i could go three wide up the middle but i'm not going to be that dumb in martinsville as we try to run the outside around the 10 of almarola as we're going to be taking the white flag in stage two as jimmy johnson p4 alongside truex he's trying to get up to third as we give him a little bit of a bump in turns one and two trying to kind of help him out but it doesn't do anything now down the back straightaway one final time we edge out almarola for the moment as we go into turns three and four we get a little bit loose in the corner and hope Hopefully we get a really good exit out of turn four. Suarez is right behind us, but we're going to edge out Almirola for P5, which means we will finish fifth in both stage one and two. So we've gained 12 points to start these first two stages, and everyone's pitting, and obviously I decide we're going to pit. And we take, uh, what, two cans of fuel, and uh, we need to make a wedge adjustment, and we need to make a tire pressure adjustment. I ended up going with one can in right side tires. 
which could end up being something that was not a good idea, but we had to, I felt like the AI was only going to take two right side tires, but you're going to see here, I was completely wrong. They took four tires, and now we're going to be restarting from the lead, which maybe could work out in our benefit, but we're about to find out as we're ready to go green. The last stage is underway as we lead the field. Uh, Clem Boyer alongside in P2 as Chase Elliott. He sits P3 right now. This could be a chance for Elliott to maybe get past Boyer and allow him to uh, kind of take over because I don't think we're going to be able to hang on to the lead. Even with these adjustments, I noticed right away that the exit of the corners for me was much better, but I still felt like we didn't have the fastest car as we do lead the first lap of the stage. Elliott goes into turns one and allows Clint Boyer to get to his inside and really just blew a really good opportunity now his Boyer is going to be able to definitely clear him probably in turns three and four and then that's going to allow Boyer to get to the back of me unfortunately now down the front straight away we're going to have to be pretty careful because we know that 14 is much faster than me through turns one and two he is all over my bumper but we do stretch the gap just a little bit now into turns three he's looking to make a move but he kind of checked up as he seen me going to the inside so he decided not to go for it as we have a little bit bigger of a gap at the moment now as we go into turns one and two boyer sends it again and gets really kind of like his back end kicks out or something and shifts him up towards the middle of the track now as this is the closest he has been as we go into turns three he's going to make a move to my inside and we're not going to fight him too much because i know he has the fastest car so we kind of hung on his outside down the front straight away but that was pretty much the best i could do as truex tried to get to my inside but we shut the door pretty quick on him not allowing him to get to my inside and make a pass for second as we now come to a few laps later now in lap 81 as you see Boyer continued to stretch the gap out but he's already met lap traffic at this point and now that should give us an opportunity maybe to run him down as we still have Truex, Johnson and Chase Elliott running behind us kind of almost in a train formation now as we, Boyer is able to get to the inside of Danica Patrick and he clears her, her with no problem his former teammate obviously as now Truex gets my back bumper we did hit the curb there and he's going to get to my inside when we go into turns one and two and that's also going to allow Jimmy Johnson in the 48 to also get to my inside now down the back straightaway as we try to clear him down the straightaway but we are unfortunately not able to clear him as he should be able to get clear of myself now within the next few moments you see now at this point in the run my car was actually starting to get loose on the exit of the corner as we make contact with the 48 but i think i would rather have a loose car on the exit right now than a really tight car because it really does seem to be helping me more now truex and johnson work on the inside of danica patrick trying to get by her as we're going to try and follow through now as we come to 41 laps to go and danica stays up in the middle line so we're going to slide in and try to get clear of her Chase Elliott behind me in P5. We know he has a pretty fast car. He's been in the top five all race along as he got uh, he gets blocked by Danica Patrick. So that's going to help me as now Boyer has been held up so much that it has brought all of us top four together. Boyer does have a few lap cars at this point in the race between himself and second place of uh, Martin Truex Jr. I think he has Greg Alding and Ross Chastain or Reed Sorensen. And then we have problems and that's the 96 into the wall and that's going to bring out a caution and he's going to hit the 48 and he's going to hit me. But we're not going to get any damage, thankfully. It looked like he lost a right front tire just like Harvick did at the end of Auto Club when we were able to steal second. But we're going to be going green from P4 as the green flag is back out for possibly the final time as Boyer leads us to the green flag with just 32 laps to go and easily clear of the 48. I should have gotten to the inside line, but I didn't. And that allowed Chase Elliott to get to my bottom as we try to clear ourselves now. But I decided to think better of it as the 9 gets into the back of the 78. And he does clear me for P4 as we drop to P5. But really, I'd rather be in 5th right now than 4th. So I'm not going to complain about that now as we have 31 laps to go. As Kevin Harvick gets to my back bumper, hopefully we get a good exit out of turn 2. You can see just how much better the exit is for us after we have uh, made those adjustments. And I just wonder at this point... If I would have taken four tires, I wonder how fast the car would have been. It might not have been much faster at all, but it might have made a difference. As you can see, the left sides are well into the 70% range now, as I believe the right side's got to be in the low 90s, maybe high 80s at this point. But you do see a gap building once again between myself and the 9, as Clint Boyer and Jimmy Johnson, they start to just drive away from the field at the moment. And we know that 
29 laps to go, lap traffic is still going to be uh, a problem. If we get a caution with less than 15 to go, then it's going to be just a straight up race to the finish. But now we come to lap 108 with just 18 to go. You see we have caught the lap traffic. But this time around, Jimmy Johnson has actually gotten alongside Clint Boyer on the outside. And he's currently trying to take the lead from Boyer. As Boyer, he's too scared right now to make a move on the lap traffic. As Jimmy Johnson, he's not. He's using the outside to his advantage. And he's trying to take control of this race now. As he gets clear of the 14 of Boyer, alongside the 23 of Gray Galding down the back straightaway, he's going to have a chance to take the lead and maybe run away with the victory here in Martinsville as he gets clear of the 23 and now has the 23 between himself and Boyer now as Truex also tries to pass Clint Boyer on the outside and Boyer goes from dominating this race to falling back to third with just in a handful of laps now as we get close to the back of Chase Elliott maybe even get alongside him on the outside here into turns three and four we're going to make the move up the outside get to the back of the 78 and hopefully we can get clear of the nine down the front straightaway we do have our teammate Jamie McMurray now who has entered the picture behind Kevin Harvick so we have both the Ganassi cars running top 10 which is really good to see down the back straightaway though still side by side with the nine of Chase Elliott and it actually stayed like this for quite a few laps as we kind of no one could go anywhere as Jimmy Johnson continues to drive away and the 14 the 78 and myself and the nine are just kind of stuck together side by side now on the exit of turn two it was pretty much like this for a handful of laps now but we did kind of start cycling through as Truex got clear of the 14 and now Greg Alding is sitting on the inside as Boyer clears him and now we have Chase Elliott still on our inside with just nine to go as we get into the back of the 14 of Boyer he is really checking up but we need to try and get clear of this nine I mean he is just continuing to not want to let go of this battle but we do get to the outside of Greg Alding and this should be where we clear him now to turn four yes we do clear the 23 and the nine so no longer uh, a factor for the moment so Chase Elliott's gonna have to get past the 23 if he even wants a shot to get a top maybe four or three as Jimmy Johnson now he's actually starting to be held up by lap traffic he's running on the outside line of uh, one of the lap cars I believe it's David Reagan but he's not actually able to get alongside him or clear of him which is bringing myself Boyer and Truex right to him as we get ready to come to six laps to go in this race we're going to have four or five cars that are within range of each other that could win this race still as we go to the outside of the 14 into the back of the 78. These guys really do not want to go anywhere with the lap traffic as Johnson continuously cannot pass the 38 as we come to four to go and we have a kamikaze type styled move from the nine of Chase Elliott. He's going to just straight up door slam me and pass me for P4 now down the back straightaway. I was not a big fan of that at all. And I decided we're going to give him a little bit of a shot to the bumper in turns 3 and 4. And let him know we did not like it. And now he gets to the inside of the 78 and the 14. And he might even get through to P2 as he gets into the back of the 14 of Boyer in turns 1 to 2. He is on a mission right now to try and get to the front and even win this race. As we're going to be coming to two laps to go through turns 3 and 4. Jimmy Johnson still cannot pass the 38 car of uh, David Reagan. But it might not matter if we can't get past these cars right here as Jimmy Johnson takes two to go. And now he gets to the outside of the 38 for a brief moment, but the 38 does clear himself once again on the exit of turn two as Elliott and Boyer continue to battle side by side as we're going to turn three. We are going to have to choose a lane here. We could still gain one more spot. We need to choose a lane, though, on which one might work better. And I decide for the moment we go to the outside line as the white flag is out and we get back into the inside line for the moment as we get into the back of the nine of Elliott out of turn two for the final time down the back straightaway it looks like Jimmy Johnson is going to hold on to the victory unless Elliott can blow something crazy off which is not going to happen at a turn four Jimmy Johnson will win in Martinsville as we will finish P4 two top fives in a row not bad at all we started Daytona really rough Atlanta I think we had a top 10 um, we might not have but Las Vegas Auto Club and now Martinsville have been really solid finishes as Jimmy Johnson who has struggled so much in the 2018 season, comes through in the video game and pulls off a victory at uh, one of his most dominant tracks other than like Dover. So now he is locked into the playoffs with a few other playoff points as well. Now up to five playoff points. He's four points ahead of me in the regular standings. So we're doing a pretty good job as we sit seventh in the point standings um, now as we let's see how much money we made. We made $384,000, gained a couple hundred thousand fans. The amount of fans you gain is not very uh, realistic, but um, now as Eric Almirola, he's not happy with us. Didn't he kind of, didn't? wasn't he the one that shoved me out of the way in that one turn? 
Um, but Kyle Busch is not happy at all, so we're going to apologize to him because I do not want to rival this early, but it looks like we're about to be rivals with him anyways, unfortunately. Like I said, I would rather be rivals with Chase Elliott, but this could certainly make things interesting. And uh, next episode will be Texas. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you uh, comment, like, subscribe. Those would all be incredibly appreciated. And I will see you guys for the next episode in Texas. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have a great day.